and welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway. Well, today I'm taking you back to the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. For On This Day in Tudor History, the 11th of August, 1581, Sir Maurice Barclay, gentleman usher of Henry VIII's Privy Chamber, died. Barclay served Edward VI as a gentleman of the Privy Chamber and was the man who arrested the rebel Thomas Wyatt the Younger in Mary I's reign. But let me give you a few more facts about this lesser-known Tudor man, and I love digging into the lives of these lesser-known people. Sir Maurice Barclay was the son of landowner Richard Barclay of Stoke and his wife Elizabeth Coningsby. Morris's birth date is not known, but it was sometime before 1514. And little is known of his early life, except that he was trained in the law in the office of the prothonotary of the Common Pleas. In 1535, his stepfather, Sir John Fitzjames, Chief Justice of the Court of King's Bench, recommended Barclay to Thomas Cromwell for the position of Clerk to the Assize. Cromwell did not appoint him in that position, but by 1537 he'd appointed Barclay to his own household and Barclay became a favourite of Cromwell, being rewarded with leases and offices in the lands of Glastonbury Abbey. In 1536, a Mr Bark was listed as jousting at Lord William Howard's wedding celebrations and it's thought that this was Barclay. By 1539, Barclay was serving as a gentleman usher of the Privy Chamber. Barclay survived his patron Cromwell's fall in 1540, continuing to serve the king as a gentleman usher. In 1541, he was rewarded with the site and much of the land of Bruton Priory, which became his seat. At some point, he married Catherine, daughter of William Blunt, 4th Baron Mountjoy, and widow of John Champernoun. The couple had three sons and five daughters. In 1543, Barclay was rewarded for his service to the king by being granted a license to hold a prebend at Ripon, even though he was not a man of the church and he was married. In 1543, he was also listed as serving in Queen Catherine Parr's household. In 1544, he served in Henry VIII's French campaign and was knighted for his service in France. In 1545, he was appointed a chief banner bearer of England, a post previously held by his brother. Other offices in Henry VIII's reign included Keeper of Northwood Park, Constable of Berkeley Castle, Chief Steward of the Lands of Bath Abbey and Commissioner of the Musters in Somerset. When Henry VIII died in January 1547, he left Barclay 133 pounds, six shillings and eight pence in his will. Barclay jousted in the celebratory joust for the coronation of King Edward VI and continued in his royal service, being appointed as a gentleman of the Privy Chamber in 1550. He benefited from the fall of Lord Protector Somerset by being given some grants. He served as a Member of Parliament on four occasions between 1547 and 1572 for the constituency of Somerset three times and for Bletchingley once. In 1553, Barclay signed Edward VI's device for the succession in which Edward chose Lady Jane Grey as his successor, but he kept out of subsequent events and he benefited from Mary I's general pardon but did lose his office of banner bearer. However, he proved his loyalty to the new queen by arresting rebel leader Thomas Wyatt the Younger in 1554. He did not, however, sit in any of the parliaments of her reign. Barclay was back in favour following the accession of Queen Elizabeth I and in 1562 he married Elizabeth Sands, daughter of Anthony Sands and a woman who served as one of the Queen's gentlewomen. They went on to have two sons and a daughter. Barclay served as sheriff for Somerset and Dorset from 1567 to 8 and he built Barclay House in Clerkenwell, London shortly before his death. He died on this day in Tudor history, the 11th of August, 1581. 
Also on this day in Tudor history, the 11th of August 1534, or shortly before, the friars observant were expelled from their religious houses due to their support of Catherine of Aragon, Henry VIII's first wife, and their refusal to accept the king as supreme head of the church in England. These men were treated terribly by Henry VIII and his government, and you can find out more about their ill treatment and their fates in last year's video, and you'll find a link to that in the description. Thank you for joining me today. You can subscribe by clicking that subscribe button just there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live and you can give me a like and leave me a comment. I'll be back tomorrow. Take care. Bye bye.